Hello and welcome to my writing desk. My name is David Glenn and today I wanted to go over another world building aspect of my work in progress, the Knights of Canmore. Kai is a world set in a parallel universe and within the continent of Aus Talun lies the kingdom of Canmore. It is here that a group of humans managed to set up a society in a world that is ruled by dinosaurs. Today we are going to be learning about the clades of animals that live in Aus Talun. Wait a moment. What's that? You're not sure what a clade is? Well, it is a tricky word to define, so we better get that out of the way first. A clade is best described as a scientific term used to describe groups of animals with similar traits that share a common ancestor. Though that doesn't mean that they get along at family reunions. While all the animals in Kai are different from the ones that evolved on Earth... For simplicity's sake, I'll be using cladistics we have here for the animals found in Owl's Taloon. I am writing for a middle grade audience and I don't want to get them confused. Just an FYI, this video will not show every species that can be found in Owl's Taloon. It is just to give a general idea on what you can expect to find in this setting. I will probably add more species further down the line, but for right now, less is more. Especially when it keeps you from running into the dreaded world builder's disease. For those who do not know, that's a term used to describe when people focus too much on developing every minute detail of their fictional saying that they never get to writing their story. It is something I fear very much. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's get into what clades we can expect to find in Owl's Taloon. Just like with prehistoric Earth, Kai is ruled by theropod dinosaurs. What's a theropod? Oh, that's just a term used to describe large predatory dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex and Spinosaurus. In Owl's Taloon, there are only two known large theropods. One is the Mvrogony, which belongs to the Spinosauridae. It was famous for dinosaurs like Baryonyx and its namesake, Spinosaurus. Spinosauridae were characterized with long, crocodilian snouts, which may have helped them specialize in fish, though they wouldn't turn their noses at other meat. The second is regarded as the ruler of the savannas in Al's Taloon, the Tonani, or King Dragon. This monarch belongs to the Carcharodontosauridae, which makes up animals like Giganotosaurus. You know, this thing. Carcharodontosaurs were characterized with having snouts that were more narrow than Tyrannosaurus rex and hunted by delivering cutting bites that caused prey to bleed to death. I feel I should mention that theropods weren't just characterized by the large carnivores. Small carnivores like the Dromaeosauridae were another type of theropod. This clade included animals like Velociraptors, and they were extremely successful and intelligent animals. Like on Earth, the Dromaeosauridae of Al's Taloon carry the signature sickle claw and use their feathers for a wide assortment of reasons. Oviraptosaurs refer to animals like Oviraptor, which were dinosaurs that were covered in feathers, had beaks, and usually had some sort of head crest. Both Dromaeosaurs and Oviraptosaurs belong to a group called Manoraptorans, which were very successful on Earth and evolved to fill a wide variety of niches. And so, in Al's Taloon, the Oviraptosaurus had an adaptive radiation. For those who don't know, that's a term that refers to when animals take multiple evolutionary routes, with some evolving to fill niches that their ancestors did not. It's very exciting to think about. I'm not going to end my theropod rant without talking about one of the most successful group of theropods. One that was so adaptable that they managed to survive the extinction event at the Cretaceous period. Yeah, that's right. In Al's Taloon, in all of Kai, the last surviving branch of dinosaurs exists too. I had to include them because it made no sense not to include birds in my world. I should warn you, even though there are birds in Al's Taloon, they are not all like the ones you'd find in your backyard. Some are enantioneths which were birds that retained claws and sometimes teeth like their dinosaur relatives. There are also Hesbjorniths, which were toothed birds that had taken to hunting in water, like loons or penguins. 
And then there are birds that do resemble what we would find here on Earth. It is in this clay that you will find a species of highly intelligent bird, a sophant species, but they will be covered in more detail later this year. No ecosystem would be complete without herbivores, and Owl's Taloon is no exception to that. The easiest to spot are the giant sauropods, or longnecks as most people know them. They're easy to spot because of their huge size. These herbivorous dinosaurs were some of the largest animals to ever exist on planet Earth. Some famous examples include Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus. The ones in Owl's Saloon take this size to extremes due to the low gravity of Kaye, though there are some that actually shrank down instead. More on that in a future episode. Another popular dinosaur icon are the Ceratopsians, or the horned dinosaurs. This is the clay that dinosaurs like Triceratops belong to, usually categorized with having sharp horns and decorative frills. In Owl's Taloon, they are doing very well, boasting all sorts of impressive horn and frill displays, but it is a good idea to stay out of their way. They're not just for decoration. They can be quite formidable when used against an opponent. Hey, guess what? In Owl's Taloon, you can also find Thyreophorans, or armored dinosaurs. Thyreophorans are actually represented by two groups, Stegosauridae, which included animals like Stegosaurus, and Ankylosauridae, which included animals like Ankylosaurus. However, in Owl's Taloon, Ankylosauridae are more common, specifically polycanthids. Here, some have developed their own tail weapons, like long, sharp spikes, and some have even taken to water habitats, like hippos. Now we have to discuss something a little difficult, the Ornitskian dinosaurs. This clade was a group of widely successful herbivorous dinosaurs, which included families like Hadrosauridae, or the duckbill dinosaurs. On Earth, they were represented by animals like Parasaurolophus and Carithosaurus. In addition to duck-like bills, they had rows of stacked teeth called dental batteries that helped them grind up tough vegetation. This trait helped lead to their widespread success. Unfortunately, in Owl's Taloon, they seem to be experiencing some competition in their niches. Another group of Onriskian dinosaurs are the Heterodontosaurids. These small dinosaurs were famous for having more than just one set of teeth, hinting at a potential omnivorous diet. Like on Earth, the heterodontosaurs of Kaye maintain relatively small sizes, showing that you don't have to be big to be awesome. The last group of Onyskian dinosaurs we will refer to as Hypsilophodonts due to their similarities to that group of dinosaurs. They were small Onyskian dinosaurs that lived in the shadow of larger animals. Famous examples include the Scalosaurus and, of course, Hypsilophodonts. The ones in Kaye have gone through an adaptive radiation utilizing their tails and feathers to make all sorts of impressive displays to attract mates and intimidate predators. There are pterosaurs present in Owl's Taloon as well. Pterosaurs were not related to dinosaurs, but were a separate group that evolved to fly. In Owl's Taloon, they are represented by fish eating nyctosaurs, which Pteranodon belonged to, as darkids, which were the largest of all the pterosaurs, like Quetzalcoatlus, and Tapayards. Now, Tapayards were pterosaurs with beaks whose functions were unknown, some suggested nutcracking, while others believed they were meat eaters. Regardless, all species of pterosaurs remain a majestic sight to see across Owl's Taloon. Now we've come to the arthropods of Owl's Taloon. This is the clade that composes of groups like insects and arachnids. In other words, these are the creepy crawlies. They may not be the most pleasant animals to think about, but arthropods are vital to any ecosystem. Many help pollinate the flowers, allowing fruit to grow. Trilobites also exist in abundance across all of Kaye, and Owl's Taloon has its own unique species. Trilobites were some of the first animals to evolve on Earth, and are related to modern-day arthropods. At least one species in Kaye has also evolved to a more terrestrial life. Another unique inhabitant of the oceans of Kaye are the Ammonites. Ammonites were part of the clade of Neocephalopoda, which were related to cephalopods like squid. Ammonites were characterized as having a shell that they used for protection from predators. And these shells came in a variety of shapes, with one at least resembling a paperclip of all things. I'm not kidding about that. 
Amphibians aren't as well represented in Al Saloon as they need a lot of water for their skin. However, they do exist in the coastal swamps and sometimes migrate inland during the wet season. Like on Earth, amphibians in Al Saloon are covered in a slimy layer of mucus. Still, the fact that they can survive here shows the resilience of amphibians. It's no surprise that reptiles have managed to find a home here in Al Saloon as well. Unlike amphibians, Reptiles are covered in scales, which allow them to endure more harsh conditions. Out of all the known reptiles, the only group to never evolve in Kaye are snakes. <gasps> yeah, I know. What a horrible thing to say during the year of the snake! In Kaye, crocodiles can reach massive sizes like their prehistoric counterparts of Earth. They were able to reach sizes that most theropod dinosaurs could only dream about, like Dinosuchus. That was a true monster, reaching lengths of 60 feet. As one certain conservation warrior once said, Crikey! <laughs> there are many species of fish in Al Saloon. At least four are known to inhabit the rivers and lakes of Al Saloon. Though when the dry season approaches, they tend to migrate to the coastal swamps to avoid the heat. Still, they provide a much needed source of protein to the inhabitants of Al Saloon. Those who live along the coast are pleased with the abundance of fish they can capture in the reefs of Al Saloon. Many of these species feed on the local plant life of the sea, among other things. They also help make the coral reefs look nice and pretty, which is a boon for tourism. There are some species which have adapted to live in the open ocean as well. These fish tend to migrate a lot, traveling from one spot to another in search of food or to breed. Their flesh can be quite delicious, and fishermen make a nice profit catching them. The coral reefs and open oceans of Owls Taloon are also home to several species of plesiosaurs. Like pterosaurs, plesiosaurs are not related to dinosaurs, but are another group of reptiles that took to the sea. Here in Owls Taloon, plesiosaurs evolved to fill a variety of niches, from large whale-like filter feeders to fast and agile hunters. Many even retained the classic long neck and short body that they had here on Earth. And for the last clade of this episode are the mammals. In Alstaloon, mammals are categorized into a few different groups. One of these groups are the multituberculates, which are extinct here on Earth. Multituberculates were categorized by their teeth, either having large blade-like premolars or having large amounts of tubercules or small cusps on their molars. Another group of mammals are the placentals, of which humans belong to like most mammals here on Earth. There are others, but... I don't have time to cover them here. And that's all we'll cover for this episode. Now, it's your turn. What clades do your fictional worlds have? Even if you are using classic fantasy elements like dragons and unicorns, you can think about how you would categorize them. Please note that if you're not doing world building like Lord of the Rings style, then you don't need to think about these details. It's just a fun exercise for you to do to think about how you would classify the inhabitants of your world into clades. I want to give Keenan Taylor a special thank you for providing the art used in this video. This video required a big load, and I hope it didn't take away from your writing. And a special thank you to all of you for watching this video. I meant to have this out last month, but due to technical issues, I had to wait. It means a lot to me that you've taken the time out of your schedule to watch this, and I thank you for your patience in waiting for this video. Join me next time as we'll cover the god of Aus Talun and Alv Kaye himself. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.